in an isocharic process t1 is equal to they given the value is in 27 degree celsius and t2 127 degree celsius we need to find uh, what is uh, value of uh, p1 divided by p2 will be equal to okay now solution uh, for an isocharic process process volume is kept constant volume is constant uh, for ideal gas this is the formula for ideal gas pv is equal to nrt for ideal gas pv is equal to nrt p is nothing but pressure v is volume and uh, t is here temperature now we took here for an isocharic process volume is kept constant so volume is constant this is a constant value so i can write this as in p is directly proportional to t okay and they ask the value of p1 divided by p2 will be equal to so this can be written as now p1 divided by p2 is equal to t1 divided by t2 okay uh, the value given for t1 as well as t2 in degree celsius we need to convert this as in kelvin so t1 they given the value for t1 as in 27 degree celsius to convert this in kelvin 273 we need to add 273 so this can be written as 300 kelvin and t2 is equal to 127 plus 273 and this is 400 kelvin okay now we got the value of t1 as well as t2 our aim is to find p1 divided by p2 so p1 divided by p2 is equal to 300 divided by 400 now these two zeros get cancelled so p1 divided by p2 is equal to 3 divided by 4 so the option is here 3 divided by 4 a difference of 2.3 electron volts separate two energy level in an atom what is the frequency of radiation emitted when an atom takes transition from upper energy level to the lower energy level so they given uh, two energy levels the difference of two energy level is 2.3 electron volt okay uh, this is e value e is equal to 2.3 electron volt i am taking this energy level as in e1 and this energy level as in e2 okay they uh, ask here what is the frequency of radiation emitted when an atom makes a transition from upper energy level to the lower energy level so now the atoms are in the higher energy level so when an atom comes to the lower energy level it emits the radiation of h nu so we are writing e is equal to h nu the energy emitted by an atom when it comes from higher energy level to the lower energy level is equal to e is equal to h nu now from this formula we can write e is equal to h nu they are asking the frequency of radiation emitted so nu is equal to e by h this is the formula e by h okay what is the given value now given they given e is equal to 2.3 electron volt always convert the electron volt into joule so to convert the electron volt into joule we need to multiply this with 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 this is joule okay now uh, h is a planck's constant we want to remind keep in your mind the planck's constant value is equal to 6.63 into 10 power minus 34 this is the value of planck's constant now you substitute in this equation you will get the answer now nu is equal to e they given a value we took here 2.3 into 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 divided by and h value 6.63 into 10 power minus 34 okay now 
न्यू इज इक्वल टू टू पॉइंट थ्री डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स थ्री इन टू वन पॉइंट सिक्स आई एम गोइंग टू टेक दिस टेन पवर माइनस थर्टी फोर इन द न्यू मरेटा सो इट बिकम्स एज अ पॉजिटिव ना दिस बिकम्स एज टेन पवर फिफ्टीन ओके नाव यू वेन यू आर डूइंग दिस कैलकुलेशन विल गेट द आंसर एज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव 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 इंटू टेन पवर फिफ्टीन This can be written as now new is equal to five point six into ten power fourteen hertz. This point comes here, so five point six into ten power fourteen hertz. So the option is here now five point six into ten power fourteen hertz. A metal conductor of length one meter rotate vertically about one half of its ends at angular velocity. Phi radian per second. If the horizontal component, the earth magnetic field, where they are given the value, this one magnetic field value, E M of develop between the two ends of the conductor, we need to find now. Now solution for a metal, they given the length as an one meter, okay, and angular velocity omega. This is a given value, phi radian per second. And then uh, they given the magnetic field intensity as zero point two into ten power minus four tesla. The formula to find the EMF. EMF is equal to B omega L square divided by two. And this can be written as now B they given the val va value as point two into 10 power minus 4 and angular velocity is 5 and length they given 1 so 1 square divided by 2 now emf is equal to if you substitute this value will get 50 micro volt so the option is here 50 micro volt here ethyl butanoate which is reacted with sodium hydroxide this gives a product a the product a which further hydrolysis it gives b the reaction is ch3 ch2 ch2 coo c2h5 plus naoh in this ethyl butanoate here the lone pair of electron present in the oxygen which is attached to na plus ion this gives ch3 ch2 ch2 coo na this is sodium butanoate product a which is on further hydrolysis which leads to the formation of ch3 ch2 ch2 cooh butanoic acid this is product b so the correct answer is 3 among this which one is used to manufacture lacquers here glyptol is a used as used to manufacture the lacquers this glyptol is as well as used in the manufacturing of paint also the maximum lead content in drinking water is 50 ppb in the case of above 50 ppb it will damage our kidney liver and reproductive systems also In the process of producing recombinant insulin chain A and chain B were joined by which of the following bonds option A hydrogen bond van der Waals force carbon bond and disulfide bond we know that the first recombinant insulin that is human insulin which was produced by using rdna technology is called as humulin isn't it so this humulin was produced by eli lilly company which is based in us isn't it 
So, what we know is whenever insulin is synthesized in our body, insulin has two peptides, chain A and chain B. Clear? So, two different peptides are synthesized and they have disulfide bond between them. So, this is how normal insulin is produced in our body. So, when the company wanted to produce recombinant insulin, they synthesized two ch uh, chains, that is chain A and chain B. And later on, they, they express this in E. coli, isn't it? So, from the E. coli, they extracted chain A and chain B individually and they inserted the disulfide bond to bring a mature insulin. The premature insulin is called as pro-insulin. So, here the correct answer is disulfide bond. Which of the following has resistance to bacterial blight disease? So, the options given here are Pusa Sadabahar, Swarinim, Komal and Snowball. So, we have learnt this. This particular column has the answer in your textbook, isn't it? So, to what does Sarabahar is resistant to? It is resistant to TMV virus, isn't it? Tobacco mosaic virus, leaf curls and chilli mosaic virus. So, this is not the answer for bacterial blight. Next comes Swarnam. So, the Swarnam species is resistant to white rust, isn't it? And here comes Pusa Komal and they have the gene which provides resistance to bacterial blight disease. So, the answer is C. And coming to Pusa Snowball, they are resistant to black rot and curl blight disease. Consider the following statements and choose the correct option below. The statement 1 is, Apomixis is the development of, Apomixis is the process of development of seed by fertilization. And statement 2 is, Apomixis is seen in the Astrace and Poaceae family. So, Apomixis is the asexual method, is the development of seed without fertilization. So, statement 1 is wrong. This Apomixis is majorly seen in the Astraceae and Poaceae family. You know, Poaceae, under the Poaceae family, the grasses will come, and under Astraceae family, Sunflower, Chrysanthemum or some of the examples. So, the correct answer is statement 1 is incorrect and the statement 2 is correct. Select the incorrect statement regarding synapses. So, let's read the statements. First option A. In electrical synapses, membranes of the pre and post synaptic neurons are separated by a fluid filled space called synaptic cleft. Okay, we will see about that. And at electrical synapses, the membranes of the pre and post synaptic neurons are in very close proximity. Yes, true. In chemical synapses, they use neurotransmitters. This is also true. In impulse transmission, impulse transmission across the chemical synapse is slower than that of electrical synapses. This is also true. So, these three statements are true, whereas the incorrect statement is option A. I will explain this. So, in the diagram, we can see this is chemical synapse. This is electrical synapse. In chemical synapse, the space is, no, between two pre and post synaptic neurons, there is a space which is called as synaptic cleft, okay. Here they have given electrical synapse. The option A, in electrical synapse, the membranes are separated by synaptic cleft. No, it is false because only in chemical synapse, synapse the synaptic cleft is present. At electrical synapses, the membranes are in very close proximity. Yes, you can see right. So, they are in very close proximity. Chemical synapses use neurotransmitters. Yes, they use neurotransmitters for transmission of impulse. Impulse transmission across the chemical synapse is slower than that of electrical synapse. It is also true because the impulse transmission is slower due to presence of neurotransmitters whereas in electrical synapse it is fast. It is more or less like transmission is an transmission in an axon. So, this statement is also correct. The wrong statement is option a. If a person has heart rate of 74 beats per minute and stroke volume of 70 ml, the approximate range of cardiac output for the person will be. So, if you know the exact answer, it will be easy. 
or we have to find out the answer. So the answer will be option B 5000 ml. Why? Because we have to calculate it. So we all know cardiac output is volume of blood pumped out from the ventricle per minute. So it has a form, we, we have a formula for cardiac output which is stroke volume into heart rate. Okay. Here the stroke volume is 70 ml. Okay. And they have given the heart rate. Stroke volume is 70 ml. They have given the heart rate also. It is 74 beats per minute. So the formula for cardiac output is stroke volume into heart rate which is 70 into 74. So the, the value will be 5180. Here they have asked the approximate cardiac output. So the approximate nearby cardiac output will be 5000 ml. So the answer will be 5000 ml. Okay. Option B. Okay. Here they given the diagram. What is A in the given diagram? So we have to identify the part A. So the answer will be alveolar epithelium. We will mark each and every part. Okay. This is endothelium. This is the capillary. So this is the endothelium of the capillary. This the space in between alveoli and the blood vessel is basement membrane. So they have asked option A. They have asked the part A. So A here is alveolar epithelium. So among these they have asked the, this part A. So this part is alveolar epithelium which is option C. So option C is the correct answer. 